I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about individualism from a sociology perspective, from a political philosophy perspective, because it really is uh, an amazing philosophy, a enlightenment philosophy. But there, there's confusion over the term because there's a couple of definitions. So one of the definitions, and this is just by Googling it, the habit or principle of being independent and self-reliant. So there are people that take that to mean individualism is a bunch of people constantly taking selfies and they're self-absorbed and they don't contribute to teams because they're only thinking of themselves or it's unbridled capitalis capitalism where people just seek advancement at the expense of others. So you'll kind of hear that criticism, but when you really want to talk about uh, individualism and how important it is and the Enlightenment philosophy, you have to take it in the context of, of the second definition. A social theory favoring freedom of action for individuals over collective or state control. And what we're talking about here is individual rights and liberties, such as freedom of speech, not state control where the government is telling you what words you can't use, what books you can't read, what television programs or movies or videos you're not allowed to watch. So that's what we're, we're talking about here. As a political philosophy, individualism is the moral stance, political philosophy, ideology, or social outlook that emphasizes the moral worth of the individual. And I think they can just take out moral and just say worth of the individual. That's really what we're talking about here. We're talking about equality and equality based on the individual, regardless of uh, what sex you are, what ethnicity you are, what sexual preference, uh, where you are in the hierarchy of your family or the hierarchy of government or the hierarchy of a corporation, uh, independent of anything, having that individual worth. Now, obviously, people in the United States uh, who know their history and know their government uh, should be familiar with this because when we get into the Declaration of Independence, all people are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, meaning they can't be taken away. This includes life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. And you look at the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, freedom of, to peacefully assemble, uh, freedom to protest or express grievances against government. And you could also find the same, once again, Enlightenment philosophy in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights created by the United Nations, I believe, in the 1950s. And if you haven't uh, checked that out, it's, it's worth giving, giving a read. Uh, once again, a universal declaration of uh, human rights. So this is very important. Anybody who's for freedom is for individualism. And often a lot of people compare it. It's this individualism counter to collectivism. But that's from a political philosophy. That's not really uh, how you counter it. Basically, this is countering a theocracy. This is countering a police state, a dictatorship, uh, authoritarian rule. That's really what we're, we're, we're talking about here in relation to individualism as is a political philosophy. It basically says that everyone born, or people would argue uh, before born, maybe up to a uh, an inception or 20 weeks uh, or whatever time where the the infant uh, the the unborn can survive outside the womb you know that that whole uh, abortion debate when is a, a life 
a, a human being recognized as an individual, but basically the philosophy here is every single individual on the face of the planet has individual rights and liberties. It's equality under the law. It's not based on a caste or once again, uh, your, your wealth or ethnicity or education level or any of those things, you're equal under the law. Now, it reminds me of secularism. Secularism says no persecution and no special privileges based on religious belief. Secularism means you can be any religion you want. You could be one religion. You can change to another religion. You could not be religious, and that's not going to change how you're treated by the law. And you also have the freedom to criticize religion because your individual rights and liberties are, are above uh, any kind of religious law. Civil law is always above religious law and secularism. But secularism only deals with the religious aspect of this equality. When you think about our uh, poster child for evil, you know, who we constantly turn to as the greatest example of evil, which is typically Adolf Hitler, and then some people argue, well, uh, Chairman Mao or uh, Russia Stalin were worse than, than Hitler, but typically Hitler is the poster card for evil. And you think about the evil against the Jews, well, you think, well, with secularism, no persecution, no special privileges based on religion, well, then that prevents what happened to the Jews, the Jews being murdered, uh, well, robbed, murdered, tortured, all these horrible things. Well, secularism would prevent that. But to be Jewish is more than a religion. It's an ethnicity. In other words, you can be Jewish without being Jewish, or you cannot be Jewish and still be Jewish. So from the religious perspective, yes, uh, secularism prevents that, that horrible evil. But from an ethnicity, since secularism only deals with religion, it doesn't provide that equality and protection. So individualism really is that larger umbrella that secularism sits under. And ever since learning about philosophy and learning about history and learning about the true value of secularism, I've always loved it. I've always been a promoter of it. I've always felt, especially as an atheist, uh, very fortunate to be a citizen of the United States of America. But here we're talking about a term that even goes beyond that. So no caste system, uh, no, once again, persecution based on ethnicity, religion, or any other uh, countless factors uh, that we just happen to be uh, part of. And so that's why it's really a powerful term, once again, when you look at the political philosophy aspect, uh, not looking at some of these other uh, just individual definitions and, and some of the uh, uh, criticisms that, that have come about that as a political philosophy, it is that ultimate equality, once again, that, that broader umbrella uh, that something like secularism fits into. And it is extremely valuable, and it's an unfortunate in the world today that it's there's so many places that don't have this individualism. Who you are as an individual doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what religion you are. Uh, and if you leave that religion, well, then you should be imprisoned or, or killed. Or what political party you're part of. And you're part, if you're part of the wrong political party and there's unrest and there's uh, some sort of revolution and this opposing political power takes, takes over, well, then you're to be uh, killed simply for being on the opposition. Uh, so it's very un unfortunate that there's many places in the world today where you don't have that political philosophy, you don't have that freedom 
freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and the people are oppressed. They're oppressed by the rulers. Uh, they're oppressed by these authoritarian regimes. And in order to fight that, people really need to understand the contrast and the words to use and the expressions to use. You have to understand it. You have to understand something to understand how valuable it is. If you don't understand how valuable something is, it's going to be easy for you to throw it out. It's going to be easy for somebody to take it from you. So it's very understand it's it's very important to have these understandings and have these discussions and understand what we're fighting for. To understand good versus evil, right versus wrong. Uh, for me, individualism represents, once again, enlightenment, philosophy. It represents the greatest pinnacle of human reasoning. And it's something that should be preserved, protected, promoted. This is absolutely something we should understand and we should be promoting. We should let others understand what our values are and why. We should be having those discussions. We should be having those arguments. So I'll continue doing that, and I hope you will too. This is Jim Wall. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Cisco, do we have to leave all our good friends now? Only until next time, Pancho. Adios, amigos. <laughs>